This is how the laser cutter should look when you come in. When you are done, we want you to leave it behind looking exactly like this. That way nobody will be able to forget plugging in the exhaust. Make sure suction is present before you plug in. Also double check if compressed air is working. Do not use the machine if air or suction are missing. Bring your DXF files on a USB key to the laser cutter. Before turning the machine on, the lens needs to be inspected. You can still move the cutting head around before the machine is turned on. So take out the screws. And if there are any smudges or foggy coatings, use alcohol and a wipe to clean it off. To turn the machine on, click the ULS control icon and then activate. And watch the machine start up and reset itself. When that's done, check the position of the red laser dot. It has to be exactly in the corner of the cutting table. If that is not the case, move the table and adjust it to the correct position. Before you put in your material, make sure there are no leftover bits and pieces on the table. Use the height gauge to adjust the distance from the cutting head. Click on Empty Page for Laser to open Corel Draw. Ignore all the offers and when everything is up and running, take your DXF file and drag and drop it into Corel Draw. In the Import window, make sure Auto Reduce Notes is checked, what units you used, or check Automatic. If you get it wrong, you can always delete your item and drag and drop it again. Like here, my workpiece is about five times bigger than the laser cutter table. It's not gonna work. Your document comes preset to inches. If you want to change them to metric, you can left click on the empty page and choose millimeters for units. The next thing you can do is change where your coordinate system is located. Left click on the corner point and drag and drop the origin to wherever you want it to be located, to the middle of the page, or you put it up on the upper right corner of your page. So when your tape measure tells you to stay 10 centimeters away from the right edge to avoid previously cut out features, your coordinate system is also positioned at the right edge. And you can drag and drop ruler lines by left clicking onto the rulers and dragging them onto the sheet. These rulers can be positioned anywhere and they do not have any effect on the actual cutting. And when you don't need them anymore, you just delete them. Corel Draw allows you to manipulate your design in all kinds of ways. You can stretch it, rotate it, scale it, warp it, and many other things. Make sure you always know the exact size of the part that you're trying to make. Lock the proportional scaling ratio and then simply enter the size that you want for your part. Move your part to where you want to cut it and then click on properties and set the fill properties to no fill and the line properties to hairline and the color for the line is red. Also important to know, if you use SOLIDWORKS for your designs, the DXF you get from SOLIDWORKS parts are tagged and before you can cut your part you need to remove that label. The way to do that is to highlight your part, click on Arrange and Ungroup. Once it's ungrouped, you can just highlight what you want to delete and delete the tags. Once the tags are gone, your part is now a number of loose lines and you should group them back together to avoid destroying your part by accident. Before you can start cutting, you have to look up the settings for the laser cutter in the laser cutter settings spreadsheet. Link is on the desktop. Find your material, in this case it's hardboard, 3 millimeters, and on the cutting it says 100-7. That means 100% power and 7% cutting speed. Back in Corel, go to Print, then click on Properties. In the Laser Cutter Utilities, click on Red because you made all the lines on your part red. And now you get to set Power and Speed. Set Mode to Vector, so the laser runs exactly on top of the lines. Don't touch the settings for PPI and Z-axis. Click on Set and double check to make sure the settings are where they should be. After clicking Apply and OK, you get back to Corel and click on Print. Now open ULS control and you should see your design.
There's one more button that can be useful to figure out how long it's going to take. The estimate view button. Click on that and hit start and you'll see how long the run will take. Do not forget to turn on the air. To begin cutting, hit start. When you are done, don't open the door immediately. Keep everything running for at least 30 seconds to properly purge the machine. Take all your materials out and clean up after yourself. If necessary, use the shop vac to get the small bits out of the machine. If the fans on the laser cutter are running at high speed, keep the machine on so that it can cool down. When done, turn everything off, unplug the exhaust and make sure to close the air valve. Don't forget to take your USB stick.